For instance, in the hospitality, leisure and tourism sector, 57% of the respondents ranked pandemic outbreak as the top risk, followed by business interruption at 39% and cyber risks at around 25%. Welcome. This is a guest segment on Africa Business Radio. I am your host, Chukunonso Modi. Findings show that the pandemic outbreak, business interruption, and cyber incidents are the top three business risks in the hospitality, leisure, and tourism industry, amongst others. This is according to survey by Allianz using the Allianz Risk Barometer 2022. Today, we are looking at these business risks in the hospitality, leisure and tourism industry in particular, and possible solutions as well. Joining me to have this discussion is an expert in the insurance industry. He has been in the field for close to 30 years and has worked for Allianz in South Africa for the past nine years. He is Jeff Tanton, Head of Commercial Insurance, Allianz South Africa. Welcome, Jeff. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, uh, Nonso. It's a lovely to be with you uh, and to your listeners today. Okay. Now, before we go into the survey, you know, and what it entails, what is the whole risk barometer all about? Sure. Uh, let me just start by oh. the Allianz Risk Barometer actually started uh, around 11 years ago. And it's something that we as a company have been running for a number of years. And for instance, this last one that was run in 2021 incorporated the views of 2,650 respondents from around 89 countries and territories mm-hmm. around the world. And the, the annual survey is conducted amongst our customers, uh, global businesses, brokers, industry trade organizations, mm-hmm. uh, as well as risk consultants, underwriters, senior managers, and claim experts in the corporate insurance segment and yes. the mid-corporate insurance segment of Allianz Global Corporate and Specialty. And uh, it basically asks the questions to these individuals, what are their expected top risks that are facing their company or the industry sector. For instance, in the hospitality, leisure and tourism sector, 57% of the respondents ranked pandemic outbreak as top risk, followed by business interruption at 39% and cyber risks at around 25%. Okay. Okay. Now you've brought up, you know, the top risk, which is pandemic outbreak. How much impact, Mm. according to your research, did it have on the African economy on this industry's? Right. So some analysts have predicted that the effects of COVID-19 have resulted in a fall of about 1.4 percent of the GDP in many of Africa's largest economies, uh, with smaller economies facing a contraction of up to 7.8 percent. And that contraction is mainly due to uh, the result of export adjustments affecting primary commodity exporters and Mm -hmm. losses to tax revenue resulting from the reduction, obviously, uh, of the capability of government to extend public services necessary to respond to the crisis, specifically to the hospitality, uh, leisure and tourism industry in 2019. The industry accounted for around 7% of Africa's GDP and contributed 169 billion U.S. dollars to its economy, uh, employing more than 24 million people. Now, in comparison, in July 2020, following the effects of COVID-19, the African Union estimated that Africa had lost nearly 55 billion U.S. dollars in travel and tourism revenues and 2 million jobs in only the first three months of the pandemic. According to the UN's World Tourist Organization survey, most people said that they did not expect a return to the pre-pandemic levels before 2023 at least, or even some saying it could even take until 2024 to return to pre-COVID levels. Mm, mm, that's a lot. But then right now, would you say that is still affecting um, businesses? I mean, they should have adjusted, if not all, some of them. Absolutely. There has certainly been a return to a normality or normalcy within a lot of sectors. Uh, there are obviously some sectors that are still trying to recuperate some of their clientele, mm. uh, but certainly there has been a move in the right direction. That's why they're saying 2022 is obviously a year of recovery. Uh, 2023 will now be a return to the levels that we saw pre-COVID and 2024 should be back to pre-COVID in totality. All right. Okay. So now let's look at the second risk, um, ranking number two, that is business interruption. Now, according to your survey, this is the second. Now, 
how has this um, what caused this risk to spring up how has it affected businesses absolutely well it, it's not really sprung up recently it's actually interesting that question because it's only the third time in the 11 year history of the risk barometer that business interruption has not ranked at the top mm. reflecting that it's probably the most feared consequence of threats like cyber pandemic outbreak and natural catastrophes yeah. the pandemic has exposed the fragility and the complexity of modern supply chains and how multiple events can come together to cause what we refer to in the industry or in fact in many industries as a black swan event which raises awareness of the need for greater resilience and transparency For instance, 45% of the respondents in the risk barometer said that recent supply chain disruptions had had the largest impact on their sector. So, supply chain disruption is expected to ease in the second half of 2022, COVID-19 mm-hmm. permitting, but the vulnerability is exposed by a host of recent events ranging from the Suez Canal blockage to global shortage of semiconductors could take companies years to fix and involve significant costs. as they look to reduce reliance on critical suppliers such as manufacturers in Asia to build alternative suppliers elsewhere in the world and the increase in digitization and reliance on IT infrastructure has resulted in an increase in cyber attacks resulting in a loss of business income due to ransomware attacks and data breaches that all have an impact on business interruption exposures okay now is this why there is a growing reliance on you know digitalization and of course a shift to remote working for companies you know is it because of the growing vulnerabilities of this business interruption absolutely the pandemic certainly raised the need for companies to develop a strategy to work remotely that certainly increased the uh, call it the burden or the reliance on it infrastructure as well as the need for more digitization within uh, the companies that certainly did have an impact and as a result created opportunities for cyber criminals to certainly um, uh, take the advantage of the situation okay now you've mentioned cyber and um, cyber incident is the third ranked risk now this shows that some of this risk are intertwined with you know business um, interruption Now for cyber what is the main driver of this recent surge 100% so as i recently mentioned absolutely the reliance on technology and digitalization is likely to be the biggest challenge for business interruption going mm. forward alongside supply chain disruption these two are cited as the biggest changes brought about by the pandemic while cyber is certainly the most feared cause of business interruption in this year's survey The main driver in the recent surge of this is due to the ransomware attacks. Okay. Recent attacks have shown worrying trends such as a double extortion tactic which combined the encryption of systems with data breaches. So in other words ransomware attacks is basically where criminals would hold the data of a company ransom and obviously then request for a payment to be made uh, in exchange for the return of their data. Uh, when they do that they return the data but then they encrypt the data which means for the companies to then gain the use of the data again they would need to then unencrypt that which the cyber criminals would then need to uh, to provide them with information so mm-hmm. it's a double extortion tactic and in addition there's also a trend for supply chain incidents where hackers can target technology or software supply chains physical critical infrastructure or digital single points of failure which exploits software vulnerabilities which potentially could affect thousands of companies mm-hmm. now companies also spoke about you know the cybersecurity ranking as a yeah, major environmental social and governance concern why is that Well, environmental, social and governance is becoming a hot topic at this stage throughout the world. The reality is with cybersecurity becoming such a prevalent reality in businesses, government as well as regulators have started to look and investors have started to look at this as a, a means or a necessity for companies to, to build reliance and plan for future outages or they would have to face consequences i'm sure that there is going to be regu- regulatory impact there are certainly going to be some requirements from government coming towards companies and certainly investors will be seeing what impacts they could potentially have 
from a, a reputational risk perspective, mm-hmm. etc. So certainly it has a, a big, big impact on companies going forward. And certainly ESG, as we phrase it, is certainly going to be um, a part of that. Gradually, this cyber incident, you know, it has suddenly become a really big network. In fact, these people are making so much money from it. Yes. Absolutely. Well, if you look at our statistics, over 2018, we had approximately 500 cyber-related claims. Hmm. That doubled to more than 1,100 in 2020. And uh, ransomware-related claims increased 50% year-on-year in 2020, while the total number of ransomware claims received in the first half of 2021 was the same as reported during the whole of 2019. So criminals have certainly become more organized and better resourced, and extortion demands have more than doubled, while business interruption losses have escalated as larger companies and their supply chains are targeted. Too bad. Okay, another thing on this list is natural catastrophe. You know, that also goes in hand with climate change. This is really not surprising, you know, as over the years, the frequency Mm. and uh, the severity of weather events are really increasing due to global warming. Now, Mm. it's no doubt that this has brought pressure to businesses, you know, not just in the physical, but in operational and um, financial aspect. Now, how much damage, Mm. according to the findings in the survey, has this done to businesses? Gosh, it's hard to quantify. I can give you some of the statistics from a a losses perspective. But 2021 was a bit of a a standout year for natural uh, catastrophes. If you look at uh, in the United States, there were the winter storms, the California and Mm -hmm. Canadian wildfires. In in Europe, there were the storms, tornadoes and flooding, as well as in China, in Zengzhou, there was also uh, a result of uh, probably more than 100 billion US dollars in losses during 2021. And even South Africa didn't escape the impact of natural catastrophes where we had total economic losses of around um, $175 million. Uh, That equates to about 2.7 billion rand. That was driven by uh, the Table Mountain wildfires, uh, widespread flooding, as well as several um, severe weather events, including tropical cyclone Eloise, which hit Mozambique during January last year, resulting Mm -hmm. in heavy rainfall throughout obviously Mozambique, as well as in um, Southern Africa. So the UN report uh, that was result, uh, released in October 2020 highlighted the fact that Africa is vulnerable to climate change mm-hmm. and is expected to become warmer and drier than it already is. And that certainly doesn't bode well for the agricultural industries, resulting in lower crop yields and obviously a knock-on effect to the risks of food security. Extreme temperature events are already evident. Heat waves, high fire danger days, temperatures that are negatively impacting human health and comfort are expected to continue if climate change uh, is not mitigated. So the impact on business is that there needs to be an active focus by companies to achieve net zero contributions. Uh, Mm -hmm. This can be done through reducing greenhouse gas emissions, investing in renewable energy sources, adopting climate-friendly technologies and, and sustainable products. And more and more, pressure will come from government regulators and lawmakers in ensuring that businesses reduce their environmental impact. In fact, many businesses have already started building up dedicated competencies around climate risk mitigation, bringing together both risk management and sustainability experts. So yes, businesses should focus on becoming more resilient towards extreme weather events as Mm -hmm. global warming increases the frequency of high severity natural catastrophe related losses. So certainly it's going to cost companies more um, uh, to set up uh, these kind of uh, strategies, but it obviously ultimately is is necessitated either through regulation or through the need uh, based on on the planet's resources. Mm, And it's also better to, you know, start uh, um, building now and not just wait for when it happens and everybody starts running around. Precisely. It, it, you, you couldn't start sooner enough. The reality is global warming has been um, a factor for more than 20 years now, if not more. And the reality is, we I wouldn't say we started too late, but certainly had we started earlier, we would potentially not have been in the position we currently are. But certainly 
there are efforts that are being made and will continue to be made. And the more that we do, the better it is ultimately for the planet as a whole. All right. Okay. Now, what is your company, Allianz, doing to help businesses mitigate this risk? I mean, I know with the pandemic, mm-hmm. um, companies are already navigating their way through. But the things like business interruption, cyber incidents, there's still mm-hmm. a whole lot that needs to be done. So what's your company mm-hmm. doing to help? So... Allianz Global Corporate and Specialty in terms of the cyber risk or cyber exposures Mm -hmm. now assesses each insurance submission it receives against cybersecurity, what we refer to as cybersecurity posture criteria. So assessments are looking for proactive technology controls such as endpoint protection, multi-factor authentication, uh, as well as regular backups, patching, training, business continuity arrangements, and crisis response capabilities. Uh, In terms of the more traditional Additional uh, damage-related insurance coverages such as property and business interruption, we have risk consultants that assist assist clients by advising them on mitigating risk exposures to ensure that they're well protected and ready for unforeseen circumstances by conducting risk surveys which highlight deficiencies in their fire and security protection as well as assisting clients in drafting and implementing their business continuity plans, especially in relation to supply chain management and de-risking dependencies on one or two key suppliers to ensure that the business continues to operate. The reality is insurance should be a backstop for companies. And even if we pay claims, the loss of income or even the loss of uh, reputational risk or business in terms of clientele, one can never really make that up in terms of an insurance loss. So our Our job, apart from obviously paying claims, is to assist clients in in preventing the losses before they even happen. If we could do that, obviously it helps uh, businesses retain and grow, and Mm -hmm. that's very important. Yes, that's really important, and it's uh, amazing that you people are doing this for businesses. I mean, I hope people are aware of this thing so they know how to tap into when the need arises. Absolutely. And we obviously, we as a corporate company don't deal directly with clients because we deal with the larger risks, but certainly we advise clients that are listening to this to get in touch with their brokers, to talk to them about what we've been chatting about, to ensure that they are well prepared for the circumstances regarding cyber exposures and obviously supplier chain management. It is critical for their businesses going forward to talk to their brokers. The brokers should be giving their clients the best advice in terms of how to place their insurance and to ensure that they're well protected. So that is our job. Fantastic. Now, before I let you go, you know, we've touched on the top (laughs) five, you know, risk. Just tell us briefly what other risks that Mm -hmm. you'll find in show. Sure, 100%. So apart from the five that we have uh, spoken about, there are the rest of the, uh, or should I say the remaining five, include such uh, topics as climate change, which I think is very much linked to natural catastrophes. And the reality is the global warming obviously has had a knock-on effect in terms of extreme weather events, which Mm -hmm. has uh, resulted in all of the natural catastrophes that I mentioned in 2021. So certainly climate change, The next one is fire and explosion. That remains one of the largest single cause of losses to businesses. If I look at 2013 to 2018, more than 15 billion US dollars in damages was paid due to fires and explosions. Uh, And in many cases, it's not even the material damage uh, that resulted in the largest losses. It was, in fact, the resultant business interruption because it takes months and months to get a business up and running, even though you might have rebuilt the plant, mm. it still needs to obviously operate and get back to, to pre-lost conditions. Uh, shortage of skilled workforce is certainly seen um, as a challenge and a risk to a lot of companies. For instance, um, there was a, a manpower group survey that basically said 69% of companies globally have now reported talent shortages, which is the highest in 15 years, mm. uh, which means that more and more skilled laborers or skilled workers uh, are, are rare to come by 
especially in the newer technology fields of IT infrastructure and security, etc. IT security, cyber security. So certainly shortage of skilled work for, workforce is going to be a challenge um, for, for uh, companies going forward. And then the last two are intertwined market developments and macroeconomic developments. So 2021 was an extreme year that can be best described by what we refer to as a catch-up bottle effect, which mm-hmm. is basically a phrase used to describe a situation where not much happens for a long time and then a lot happens at once at when once, you shake that bottle. Yes. And basically after the lockdowns, the demand for goods and services There's exploded. Lot, yes. There was an overwhelming supply capacity and resulting in clogged supply chains, material and labor shortages and rising prices. And the consequence of that was the roller coaster growth path with strong demand driven quarters followed by weak quarters that were stagnating or even declining growth. So 2022 is unlikely to be much more stable as COVID is not really over yet. And obviously the Omicron variant is still rendering some uh, issues throughout uh, Africa. Uh, the constant changing between tightening and loosening of restrictions is going to continue potentially. And supply chain tensions will certainly start to ease, but it's going to continue through 2022. So those macroeconomic developments will continue to put pressure on companies. And obviously the developments in, in markets will certainly have an impact there. So those were the other five that were outside of the of the main five that were affecting the hospitality, leisure, tourism industry specifically. Mm. So this is a lot, and honestly, with all what we've said, and companies need to, you know, start looking for how to mitigate this risk before it gets out of hand. Yes. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. The the reality is rel- uh, resilience and. Uh, looking ahead to building business continuity. I, I think business continuity, if I had to sum up our discussion today, would be the most important thing that companies need to be looking for. Mm. Look to your organization. Look to how you can mitigate your risks. Look to the continuity of your business when you have large losses. Think of those scenarios that could potentially have huge impacts on your business and build plans that could obviously mitigate those exposures or lessen the impact of those exposures by putting plans in place that would allow your company to continue to operate so especially in terms of supply chain management as the world is getting smaller because we are now on a global stage supply chain management is now not only local but in international so you might have a supplier sitting in china that could potentially have a huge uh, effect of a hurricane or a tsunami that could shut down your business because they are they've been destroyed and you only get your products or your raw materials from that one supplier So you have to think not only of your own risks, but risks that could affect your business coming from the outside because they are integral to how your company operates. So yes, 100% resilience and business continuity is uh, is what I would say is the takeaway from today's conversation. All right. Thank you. That that was a really strong finish. Resilience and business continuity. Thank you so much, Jeff, for joining us on the show and for discussing this matter with us. Absolutely, non. So thanks for the opportunity and uh, have a great day for that. You too. That was Jeff Tanton, Head Commercial Insurance and Leon, South Africa. More interesting content coming your way. Don't go anywhere.